Hello, this is Dr. Ron Valdeseri, and I'm reporting from the 19th International AIDS Conference here in Washington, D.C., and I'm delighted to be joined by my friend and colleague, Mr. Terrence Moore. And Terrence is the Director of Policy and Health Equity at the National Alliance of State and Territorial AIDS Directors. What are some of the messages you're hearing at this meeting about the HIV AIDS epidemic among black gay and bisexual men in the United States? I think we've been hearing a great deal about uh, what we've all been, uh, what we've all known for quite some time and what is continuous um, in terms of a theme around incidents among gay men, uh, particularly black gay men, um, young black gay men in the United States and I think it's sobering and I think one of the things that is even most sobering despite knowing uh, all of the new prevention tools that we have in our arsenal um, I'm really troubled in terms of whether we'll truly be able to scale up HIV prevention in the United States um, for this population uh, for a variety of reasons. Certainly. So can you share with our viewers some of the maybe some of the positive changes you've seen in state health departments in trying to address the HIV AIDS epidemic in this population? Absolutely, and it hasn't been easy. I think um, our members, uh, much like we are at the national level, are struggling with all of these questions and trying to figure out how best to address and meet the needs of the, the population. And it is important to acknowledge that you know black gay men and other MSM are not a monolithic population. And, we're looking at um, a variety of different issues that are related to stigma um, and all of its various forms, whether it's HIV-related stigma um, or if it's gay-related stigma, um, whether a gay man is femme or, mm. or, uh, or not. And so I think um, we are seeing leadership emerging mm. in terms of mobilization across the country. I think our members have been uh, very engaged in that process. Um, I think one of the things uh, that we worked on several years ago was really trying to track spending um, in health departments. Um, where were resources going, both financial and human, to the population? Um, and we saw to, to make sure the resources match were the matching epidemic. the epidemic. Yes, uh, one of the things that we learned pretty quickly when we did a survey several years ago is that there were paltry sum of resources that were going towards the population. And so I think pretty quickly our members mobilized, brainstormed, and figured out ways that we could do a better job um, of that. Now you've been involved in the campaign, the CDC campaign, Testing Makes Us Stronger. And I think that's a very positive example of how folks are trying to reconfigure to address current needs. Could you tell the viewers a bit about the Testing Makes Us Stronger campaign? I can, um, and I want to take a step back before I answer your question. You know, as an HIV positive black man, um, having been diagnosed uh, in 2001, I think how my life could have been different if there were things like this, um, th this meaning this campaign out there where I could see an image of myself mm -hmm. and something empowering to, to make me take action. Mm -hmm. And I think that this campaign does just that. And um, as I mentioned before, uh, black gay men or other MSM are not monolithic. And the fact that this campaign speaks to and demonstrates across a wide swath of men, um, whether you're femme, whether you are um, a, a youth, um, et cetera, showing all of that I think is really important and being able to disseminate that um, every place across the country, I think. And the campaign encourages men to get, get tested, tested. Yes. but in a positive way, mm -hmm. hence the name Testing Makes Us Stronger. Mm -hmm. It really talks about the, the care of the community, so it, it, it takes it from just the individual perspective to testing makes us stronger. Um, and so I think it's a, it's a, it's a powerful tool. Um, and again, it's one of many things mm -hmm. that I think we have to be focused on. The other area that uh, I'm really concerned about is um, just uh, linkage to care among uh, gay men. We know we, we have data that suggests that um, we are not doing a great job, um, just generally speaking, around linkage and adherence to antiretroviral medications. Um, 
of HIV people in general, but we know particularly that's the case among uh, uh, black gay men. Yeah. Um, for a variety of reasons, lack of health insurance, stigma, and so it's certainly something that we need to spend time addressing in a very meaningful way. One of the factors or one of the features of this conference that I'm finding very interesting is that uh, really for the first time in many years this conference is talking about the HIV AIDS epidemic globally among men who have sex with men and they're talking about it in the developing world. I mean they always talked about it in, in Europe and the US and Canada, right. maybe South America, but we're hearing more and more about gay and bisexual men in Africa and in Asia and other places. And are you, uh, Terence, are you hearing any commonalities? I think the major commonality is stigma. And I think we can have the best biomedical um, interventions uh, as part of our arsenal. Um, I want to see us talk about and figure out new and more robust ways to address stigma. Um, I think our colleagues globally are struggling with this issue and I think we're struggling with it uh, domestically as well. And so beyond this magnificent campaign that CDC is doing, I think across the federal government and at state and local levels, we have to figure out better ways to increase public knowledge um, of people living with HIV. Uh, we have to get at the isms of society, mm -hmm. racism. Mm -hmm. um, we have to really start to address major issues of homophobia. Um, I think the president um, talking very publicly um, in multiple different ways um, over the last year or so um, about gay and lesbian, transgender, queer and questioning individuals is a huge step forward in our society. And I hope that we can continue to have that, this, uh, that particular dialogue. Well, as, as Terrence has pointed out, uh, a lot of progress but a lot of challenges remain. And clearly it's a reason why we have to continue to invest not just in the biomedical research to develop better treatments, microbicide, a vaccine, but we also have to invest into research that tells us how we can better address stigma, as you've pointed out. I think uh, invest in research that helps us develop systems of care that are welcoming uh, to young and old, gay and straight, to all the populations touched by this epidemic. This is Dr. Ron Valdeseri reporting from the 19th International AIDS meeting here in Washington, D.C. And I want to thank you, Terrence, for your sharing your time and expertise with us. Okay. Thank you Thanks so, so much. much.